<laughs> Carpe Diem says, Mehran, what do you think is the oldest age man should have kids? Ah, very good question. To be a good father. Uh huh. Excellent question. Let me put my wisdom face on a bit for a second. <laughs> Shakespeare said, life is a stage, stage of a theater. In the theater, production of a theater, you try to cast properly. Make sure the people that you choose to represent a certain role a character would be the right one and those people to be successful must be interested in the role must be excited and fully focused and proud and happy content to have that role well coming back to the modern times <laughs> That would be the mentality, state of mind of a father. That you want to be a father. You want to have the role of the father in the theater of life at that moment in time in space. Which means you have to have the credentials. You want to be an athlete, you go train, you get ready, you're fit, you're fully focused, you're into that Whatever it is you want to compete, track, tennis, soccer, equestrian, show jumping, whatever it is, you're totally, and you've been trained, lived it, breathed it, thought through it, practiced, trained, focused, became that athlete, seeing yourself, envisioning yourself, having the image of yourself being, doing that thing, one with that sport, then you will perform the best of your ability. And if you want to perform the best of your ability to be the best father you can be to your children, you must have the credentials, which means the physical and mental readiness tra training and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, interest, focus, to perform the best you can. So what does that entail? First of all, you should have, you should be young enough to endure and want to be patient, to have the energy to still remember your childhood, to want to be a kid, to create a mentality in yourself beside the youth so you can run around and have the energy to play with that child so the child would find you as a friend, not someone that when he has a question or she has a question can only come to because the guy is old, he's not going to run with me, he's not going to play soccer with me, tennis with me, basketball with me, baseball with me, he's not going to, you know, wrestle with me, he's not going to, you know, run around, play games, play silly games in one side of the room, the other side of the room, throw balls, throw whatever, invent games. He's old. He loves me, but he doesn't want to play the game or, you know, play chess or do homework or run around, play tennis. So I can only ask him questions when I need to, the child, thanks. But if you have the youth, then that's a different story. You're not just a father to your child, to your children. And so when they come to you for wisdom and guidance, protection, they also consider you a friend because when they want to play, say, Dad, you want to play? And you say, if you're not busy, you say, yes. Or even if you're busy, you have that urge to go throw a ball. That's one thing. Second, you don't want the age difference 
between you and your child to be so much that you will fail to understand. Because as we know, we're morphing <laughs> through life. You know, we're infants and we're a child and we're teenager, then we're student in university or whatever, an adult, and, and then we, you know, growing up physically and mentally, we're changing. And at one point in time, we get to the point that we forget that we were a child. Suddenly we come see this stiff-headed, nose up, not flexible, inflexible piece of shit that cannot really understand the dynamics of the world and where he was and how his parents and people around him, the society at the time he was raising was, and how he would frown upon many things and fail to understand why the elders would not understand or the society community would not understand the needs and interests of a child as he was. And now he's become that piece of shit himself and cannot actually be flexible uh, too rigid and that brings a certain kind of a hell to the life of the child because it is all too serious while it should be filled with responsibilities and plans and you know uh, ability to protect the child and provide and at the same time guide properly with manners morals and a good role model for the child uh, to be the man that he's supposed to be or to be the, to become the woman that she's supposed to be and the mother and father both would be able to be the go good role models to to introduce the ocean of life to these little boats that they're trying to become the ships of the of the sea travelers and for that you need a certain mentality an age that you haven't forgotten who you were you were a child and now you should learn to be a wise child, to be a royal model to your own offspring, rather than be an old fart who can't see and understand anything, and is only focused on his own or her own selfishness, interest, comfort, and all he thought having a child is to enjoy the sex part of it with his wife, and make a child and then after that he or she thinks oh you know now somebody got to raise them and then they could still have their own parties and so on you got to get into the act you got to understand that you are now a father or a mother it is no longer a single time it is no longer when you just got married and it's only the two of you it is now time to be in the role love the role grow with the role be proud of the role, be into the role, be the role, be the father, not look like a father, not play the father, be the father. That is when the theater gets a standing ovation at the end of it. And that is what Shakespeare meant, I guess. So, <laughs> hope that will answer your question.